So here we are in R. And what we're going to do is to determine how in R, or find out how in R we're going to be able to do that normality test, the shapiro wilk test, and how to do that test of homoscedasticity, the Levine test. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's go ahead and open up a new script. And Windows, tile vertically. I'll go ahead and do all the typing from yesterday. Make it nice and easy. Boom, there it is. So again, we've got the L count. That's the dependent variable. That's the log count of bacteria in the meat samples. We've got packaging type. And that's the independent variable or the grouping variable. A's, B, C, D. Remind yourself why it's no, why I don't have quotation marks around the A. And also remind yourself why I did this. So I'm going to run those lines, make sure no errors, no errors popped up, awesome. Here's the model, again this is analysis of variance, so AOV, this is one way analysis of variance, one independent variable. And then the summary of the model gives us the, the shortened version of the ANOVA table. P-value is still less than alpha, therefore we know that at least one of the mean log count of bacteria for the packages differs from the others. Okay, now test normality. To test normality, what we actually mean is that the data are normally distributed in each of the groups. Or, equivalently, at least from a, from a logical standpoint, we're looking at the normality of the residuals themselves. So first thing is we're going to calculate the residuals going to call the residuals, store them into a variable called E. The function is residuals. It takes the model. So control R. If you want to look at the raw residuals, just highlight the E, control R. Those are the residuals. Nothing spectacular. We could, if we wish, do a histogram of those residuals. Um, that should be a hint to us that they may be normal, normal, they may not be normal. There's just not a lot of data points here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 data points. It's going to be really hard to test normality. It's going to be a very low power test no matter what you use because there's not a lot of data available. So now to do the test of normality, the Shapiro Wilk test of normality, the function is Shapiro.test. And it takes the variable in this case the residuals, E, as its argument. Control R. The null hypothesis of the shapiro wilk normality test is normality. That is that the data, the values that you've put in here as E, come from a normally distributed population. Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Conclude that the assumption that the data come from a normal population is not severely violated. Shorthand for that is it passes this test. Next test is homoscedasticity. Homo That's going to be the Levine test. The function is L-E-V-E-N-E -E -E for Levine, and then capital T, test. Now this requires the original dependent variable and independent variable separated by a comma. Ask me why it's separated by a comma. I don't know. It's just the way that the function writers decided to set up this function. So I'm going to hit Control R. Oh my goodness, I got an error. Oh, I should have waited until I actually got the error. OK. Oh my goodness, I have an error. Could not find function Levine test. And that's because the Levine test is a part of the car package. So we need to load, I need to spell library correctly, load the car package. That's pretty straightforward, just library of car, control R, and no problems. Well, no problems for me. You may need to import the library uh, car. So again, to do that, go up to packages, install, Select your CRAN mirror. I'm going to do Belgium. 
and then we just select the package. It's in alphabetical order. Select car, hit OK, and you're good to go. Or you should be. I exited out. So now that the car package has been loaded, I'll run the Levine test. We really have a warning message. This is actually kind of an important warning message. In Levine test.default package coerced to a factor. And that's because Levine test, like the analysis of variance test, assumes that this package variable is a categorical variable. And the way that we've actually created it here, it's unclear to R that this is actually a categorical variable. Could just be several strings stuck together. So we may want to. It hasn't changed anything yet, but it will get rid of these warning messages that will pop up. We may need to specify that package is going to be a factor. How do we do that? That's not how we do that. P A C K A G. Okay, package is equal to the old package, but we're going to apply a function to it as factor. And the as factor function will take whatever's in the parentheses and change it into a factor in R. And here we're just saving it back into package. So control R, go back down and run that homeoscedasticity line, no longer get the warning. The table hasn't changed. P-value is still greater than alpha. It's 0.8943. It's, it's a lot greater than alpha. And because the p-value is greater than alpha, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. And what is that null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that the variances are equal, that there is a homogeneity of variances. p is greater than alpha, we failed to reject that. Shorthand, this data, this model, passes the homogeneity of variances test, the Levine test. In other words, it passes both assumption tests. Since it passes both assumption tests, the results that we got back here are valid. And so this p-value actually does have a good meaning. We can, again, remember summary.lm. We want to look at the the um, the tau model, the effects model, and so since this model and the data passes the two assumption tests, we're good to go with this model, and that's actually all we were going to do today: find out how to test normality and how to test for homoscedasticity, and this is it. Hopefully, this was helpful. Thank you very much.